just, just get the, the, the little bits out the way first, if you like. Sure. Um, have, have you got any players being released back to you this week? If you bring your boots, if you bring your boots, then I probably can get you a go. No, um, no, no, no players released to us, no. So, I mean, you told, you told us last week you didn't expect that to be the case anyway. No. Um, no, hoped, maybe, but no, I don't yeah. expect, we didn't expect it to be, um, um, yeah, it is uh, it is what it is, I'm afraid. Yeah, and, and are you hearing any news on Gareth Anscombe, you know, are you guys still in touch with him? Is, uh, he, is he likely to be available to Wales for the All Blacks game? Uh, well, we've, we've had no dialogue as of such, I mean, obviously they get them, them I mean, especially for us on a Sunday with a... You know, with a turnaround straight into a into a camp week is always very difficult, um, and aligning all those things. To be honest, we've spent most of our time getting, you know, what we can control right with the team that we've got and get them ready at the best we can, uh, and give the boys the best chance for Connell on on Saturday. So um, we expected if there was any dialogue, I'm sure players have asked the questions if they felt that they wanted game time and that's down to Wayne. Uh, we can only control what we have here and that's what we we need to continue to do. Now when you left Gareth, he'd been training with you, hadn't he? Yeah. He was in training. Yeah, yeah, he just started training, yeah. So there was him um, and obviously Justin hadn't done too much. Um, you know, obviously you know those boys have just started coming back for us, got, got Gareth Thomas and whatever, so Gar Tom and, and people like that. So, um, yeah, it is what it is, um, and we'll crack on accordingly. So, for, the, for your game this week against Connaught, have you, have you got any guys coming back into the mix? No. No. I've, oh, as in off, in, off injury, you mean? Yeah. Um, so, from injury notes, uh, so injury wise, we're still we're, we're out without Will Griff, Steve Myler. Um, Reese Webb went off HIA, so he won't be available. Um, I think uh, Michael Collins has got um, a rib. Is it a rib injury? He's got. He's barely banged up, so he might make it. But he hasn't done too much training. But he's got a lot of, lot of um, game time under his belt. So we're hoping that he'll be okay. Um, I think that's about it. I think the rest are either with Wales or, or long term injured. So you really, really stretch, you know, at scrum half for there and outside half as well. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, from a, yeah, I think. I mean, obviously we contribute the numbers, but in reality, you've got nine forwards going to, uh, you know, into Wales, which makes things a challenge. Um, you've also got some up and coming players. So for someone like Joe Hawking would have benefited probably from playing, but he's been obviously pulled up as well. So. Um, it's good experience for them, but uh, they, there's, there was potential opportunity to, to play some of those guys that have played a little bit or a little bit undercooked. But um, yeah, the, uh, as you say, we've got what we've got and uh, we're looking forward to it actually. The, the challenge will be big, but we're actually looking forward to it because we've spoken about it a lot. These guys are the same guys that did well against Irish provinces here last year. Um, Two seasons ago, went to Leinster and, and in the same sort of international window and got a result there. So we've got to believe in what we're doing, and we do. And it's a great opportunity for them to put their hand up. Is my smart brother all? Is, is he fit and well, or is he is he? Well, he, he so he got injured playing for Swansea. He had game time, so um, so he's got a little niggle. He's not far away. He but it's just a week too early. He's because he's uh, obviously a. Uh, a fast twitch athlete, you know, you got to make sure that they're right. He'll be fine for South Africa, but this will come a week too soon for him. So, when you look at this situation, you, you've got injuries, you've got 13 or, four, 13 or 14 players away with Wales. What, what do you think of the structure of the season uh, at, this, at this point? Um, what do I think about it? I think it's, it's, it's challenging, but it's challenging being an international coach. You want time with players, so I do understand there's, there's, it's difficult. And when you get, you know, we've, we've, we've all got agendas that don't fit, you know, really. So that's unfortunate. Um, however, you don't, I don't think you can plan for having such a number. You know, that's probably the, the bit of a shock, a bit of a victim of our own success in that respect. 
Um, so the actual vote, the number that we got this time, you know, we we know we know people and dialogue with the coaches and and whatever. We know that certain people are, but there's a there's sort of a couple a couple have come out of left field that we didn't see. That makes it more challenging. But as much as that, it's the, the ability to prepare, the ability to prepare against the same intensity and the same physicality that you require to go, to go toe to toe with URC opposition, and that's what you can't do. You can't mimic, mimic that if you're training against your academy and your transition players. You just can't deliver that physicality. So that's fine for a one-off, but. If you look at November downtime into South Africa, that's going to be very, very challenging when you get to those aspects. You know, so lots of lots of challenges ahead, Mark. To be fair, lots of challenges. Would you like to see the Six Nations push back to the end of the season? Um, no, not necessarily. I just, I, I think. I mean, it depends on people's opinion. I mean, the, the more aligned the seasons are, the easier it is for everybody. You know, and, and clear to find windows of availability and. Where I feel sorry for potentially is on a on a commercial side, really, because you know a lot of the a lot of the uncertain or the unavailability manifests itself in fans not being able to go and watch their favourite players, and I think that you know people want competitive games as much as it offers, and they want to see the people that, that they see as their you know best players or international players. They want to see them live, so I think that 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 I think they miss out. As well as we miss out from a performance side too. Yeah, and what did you feel? How did you feel Connaught went against the Scarlets, and what are you expecting this week from them? Well, they're physical, right? They've always been physical. Um, a lot of the Irish provinces are. They're very efficient at the breakdown, and we're going to need to make sure that we deal with the physicality that they showed against the Scarlets. They did the same against Leinster. They did the same against Munster. You know, they bring a level of physicality that's very, very challenging. And we need to be up for that, and uh, we need to be ready for that fight because ultimately it's going to be around physicality and the breakdown is where this game's going to be won and lost. I think. Uh, can we expect to see the likes of Will Hickey and Harry Deeves do in this period? Yeah, well, Will Hickey's injured. Um, he's not back in training yet, but Harry Deeves certainly. Um, yeah, and those boys that have been knocking on the door and knock my door on a regular basis asking what they need to do and as I said the opportunity in this is, is huge whether it be people fight for, people that you see so like a Morgan Morris for example it's an opportunity for him as a leader as well as being a good player uh, we know what he does uh, what he does from a performance point of view so it gives him leadership opportunity uh, people like Ruben as well um, uh, you know, there's players that have played enough that they need to lead um, because that's what the team requires. And then there's people that are on the fringes that have been asking and banging at the door for an opportunity. So, you know, you'll see people like um, Kieran Williams and 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 Tian and Harry Deves and people like that that have that warrant an inclusion and an opportunity. And we're looking forward to seeing them boys grab it with both hands. How much uh, potential has Harry Deves got? Have you seen a, a young player, a similar player to him before in your time in Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of similarities between him and Jack Morgan in relation from a tenacity point of view, for sure. Um, there's um, there's um, a lot of energy around him, and, it, and the challenge for Deeves is being accurate with that energy. But as you've seen in the cameos that he's played, you know, even on the back foot, sail away last year in the in the in the European competition, you saw how visible he was, even off the back foot, and that's normally the sign of a very talented player that has impactful moments in that sort of contest. Yeah, and uh, we we mentioned it to to Reece there. You uh, you will benefit from having some experience in in your hookers, for instance, either Sam or, or Scott or Elvis or what have you, and maybe Tom Bother as well. Michael Collins, perhaps, so there will be some experience there. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and you know, there's always going to be a balance, isn't it, between having enough experience around, a few old heads around, as well as the uh, to, you know, cajole the energy in the right places. And, you know, those things are important. And, yeah, we're thin, but we do have some, uh, some, good, um, some good experience in there. And, you know, that's why we recruit, especially up front, some of those boys, you know, that can bring that sort of. Uh, understanding of what to do in, in the set piece because you know those are, that's where we've probably been hurt the most. Now we spoke to Reece earlier and um, 
how, how do you assess his development uh, this season and last? Does he progress significantly under you there? Yeah, massively. I think that the SNC guys take need to take a lot of credit of that. I think he's always had a lot of physicality. He's a competitor, which is great. You've seen him. As I think I've mentioned to you before. He's one of his early sessions. You know, he stood toe to toe, and while the game was going, the training was going on. Him and Alan Wynne Jones were, you know, introducing each other themselves to each other, and that's the first test that you need. Um, and he's never backed down, which is brilliant. And he's got the respect of the senior pros around him. And now's a chance for him to, to be that senior pro because that's what it requires. But his biggest growth has been, you know, being more accurate, but also developing physically to, to become an 80 minute player. And, and he's increased his body mass, he's increased his capacity, which means that he's, you know, he's basically growing into that body of his. And, you know, that's an exciting thing for us because, you know, he brings a level of physicality that we're certainly going to need this week, but it's a physicality that we need every week. And the last question of the lot, you know, have you drawn a line under last week's effort? Did you, what did you learn from that match? Um, pretty much what I said at the end. I mean, from an overall perspective, I think that, I think we got found wanting in a few areas and I think we tried to get back and we were probably overzealous in how we did that. I think our discipline, you know, with the penalty count at half time was 9-2 and two yellow cards and that makes performances away from home very difficult. You know, we nearly got back there again. I thought, here comes another draw. Um, here it comes. So from that point of view, look, we know we're competitive. And, you know, the, the big thing for us is we are trying to play a different, a slightly different game. And we understand that playing ball in hand and scoring more tries comes with a bit more risk. And I think that we have to understand that playing and scoring more tries, which we're doing, creating more opportunities, which we're doing, um, comes with a little bit more risk. and those narrow losses and draws last year were probably wins but we weren't creating enough and we weren't preparing ourselves to you know to, to knock the door down and make sure we get enough bonus points to get ourselves into the final shake up so yeah it's not of course we we would like a couple of more wins and you know we're very close if you look at by the Ulster game we've been in every contest um, but we understand there's a bit of a journey in here and especially with all the, uh, the changes doesn't make that consistency or makes that consistency harder to get but we've got what we've got we, we're not going to change our attitude to playing the top brand of rugby that we want to play um, we've just got to be better at it and you know tip the scales slightly back in the other direction Brilliant Toby, I'll be here. Thank you, cheers Mark, thanks I took just a couple of very quick ones. Um, as Lou said, with Nicky Smith and Gareth Thomas in the squad, what have you got? Is it Garen Phillips and is Reese Henry covering there as well? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So those are you two. Um, and just another one, I suppose the tips being, you know, named as captain, that's another nice one of the club, you know, Alan Lindon for so many years. Mm. Um, you know him so well. What, what do you see that he will bring to what is a, you know, a, a role of honour? Really? Yeah, I mean, for, for him, the biggest thing, he's a lead by example guy. I mean, He's he's extremely talented, and you know can t he, he's a, a multidisciplinary player. And what I mean by that is he has attributes in different parts of the game, and very few people can do that. They're either a defensive based player or an attack based player or this. You know, Justin, without doubt, is a lead by example in many facets. He's a very very good at line out jumper. You know, brings part to set piece. He's a very very good athlete. He's a very skillful player attack-wise and he's a very, very good defender. So he has influence in all aspects of the game. So I'm sure he's been put in that position because of his experience, of course, but it because he'll lead by example for sure. The next month coming up, remember last year you said um, that you know, the, this gap period whilst the international drop uh, becomes almost a second pre-season mm -hmm. for the team. Yeah. Uh, is that the case again this year? How, how much time... Do they get off after this game and, and when you're back in? And, uh, how does things change? Do you then go back to the gym? What's, what's sure. That uh, look like? So, obviously, we are, um, we've been through a, a pre season and the first block of games. So, we'll give them a, a down week to physically and mentally recover because the hamster wheel's been turning quite quickly. Um, and then we'll go into that mini pre season as, as you mention it before we go to set we the way the fixtures have sort of conspired is we go to south africa for two weeks come back straight into the champions cup 
um, games, Leicester and Montpellier, straight into Welsh derbies, straight into Leinster. So the next block is fairly ferocious. So I think that we've got to make sure that we ma we manage and, and, and plan that to the best of our ability. So that, that November allows us just to take stock on where we need to put our efforts significantly to keep the main things the main things, but be quite surgical on parts of the game that we're going to need to get better at. Um, and part of that will be upskilling the youngsters because we know that those international boys won't go to South Africa because of the, the fixture clash. So there's going to be a lot of emphasis on keep getting those young players better, um, along with what the team needs to improve on significantly from block one, which and obviously getting us physically and mentally fresh in order to get to you know jump into block two, which is going to be a war. So. Um, you know, that, that's it in a nutshell, really. Um, the granular detail obviously comes from that.